This is Dahab, a small town in the Sinai Peninsula with a population of roughly 15,000 people. Previously, Dahab was a Bedouin fishing village that is now transformed into a hotspot for tourism in Egypt. More specifically, diving and kite surfing is what this place is most well known for. But trust me when I tell you, Dahab has so much more to offer than just that. Welcome everybody. I think it's only proper that I start this video out by saying, tell me you're in Egypt without actually telling me you're in Egypt. We got camels, we've got the desert, and we have the desert accommodation right here. So we're gonna be spending the next four days here in Dahab. Got Maria Del Carmen over here hiding, staying away from the camels right there. And we're gonna be exploring all around this place from doing some snorkeling to hiking up into the mountains. So we have a lot of things planned. And I've heard from many, many Egyptians that this is one of the best places to go. So get ready, it's gonna be an adventure. Before we get further into this video, I just wanna mention that if you don't know anything about Dahab, it's actually the dive capital of Egypt and some would argue that it's the dive capital of the world. There's this place we're gonna show you later called the Blue Hole. Probably not going to dive it because it's actually one of the most dangerous places in the world to dive. There's a lot of depths because people go to insane depths here. And so we're just gonna be doing some snorkeling, but from what I've heard, it's still very beautiful. So we'll show you guys that in a little bit. Dahab is about uh, one hour away from Sharm El Sheikh, and Sharm El Sheikh is the city that's closest in which you can fly into. So it's about an hour or so to get from Cairo. All right, guys, and so before we jump into the video, there's probably a few things to share with you about Egypt that will be very helpful and actually for a lot of Arab countries, which you might have picked up in my Dubai videos. Learning a couple Arabic words, one, to blend in with the culture, and two, to kind of get to know some of the words here. So Maria actually is pretty good in Arabic. She's gonna tell us a greeting like, I come in peace, which is like a way to just initially meet someone and you say this. Salam Malikum. And what about uh, if you want to thank someone? Shukran. Dang, you know, she, you would think she's actually fluent in Arabic. So you heard it live there. Salam alaikum and shukran. And there's a few other words, but I can't remember. So maybe in some later vlogs, we're going to teach you some more Arabic. So we're actually staying here at Canyon Estate, which is a little bit further outside from downtown. And when I mean a little bit further, it's probably like a five kilometer walk. So three miles or so. So still pretty close in general. And so we found this place on Airbnb and it's costing us about like $40 per night. So $20 per person to stay in this pretty sweet compound. It's got a swimming pool. It's right next to the beach near snorkeling. We have camels. If you can probably hear that in the background, making some noise. And then we have like a nice studio apartment that um, honestly you could probably sleep like four people in them because there's a couch like a full-size bed and yeah it's, it's a pretty nice overall spot to relax and then easily be able to explore to have. One thing I want to mention is that this list of things to do is not in any specific order of best to worst it's just simply the way that we decided to do it while we're here in Zahab. So anyways, the first thing on the list that we're going to be doing is we're going to be snorkeling right here on the Red Sea and it's actually super, super close to Saudi Arabia. Right here is about like 13 miles or so. So at night you can actually see some small Saudi Arabian villages lit up. Now we're going to be going right here in this water. You can't really see much, but that's the beauty of it. Underwater there's coral that lines all the way along here that we're gonna be swimming along. A tip for you that we learned from our man Mahmed is that there is fire coral in here, so there's only specific parts where you should walk in because fire coral basically wants to kill you even though it won't actually kill you. And it's going to sting and burn for like a couple minutes to maybe 30 minutes if you step on it. So make sure you talk to your hotel guide, figure out where the right spot is to go inside the water and then you can go ahead and snorkel right along here and just make sure you're not touching the coral. One, to not kill it and two, to not get yourself stung. You won't find too many dangerous animals around here. There are some sharks, but they're friendly from what we're told. But there are barracudas in some of the areas around here that might bite, but I don't think they're deadly or anything. 
So let's go snorkel. So the canyon dive and snorkel spot was the first spot we snorkeled at since it's conveniently located just a few steps away from the Airbnb. It was an enjoyable time, but you will see later in this video the other places we snorkeled were 10 times better. It was still worth going in if you're close to it. I should mention you can also scuba dive here too though, so that might be a little nicer once you go further into the depths. So we just finished up some snorkeling and it was really nice. Super cold though here in March time. I'd say roughly like 22 Celsius. A little chilly, I'd say. A wetsuit would have been nice, but it's only a little chilly right when you hop in. Still pretty beautiful here. We're gonna be doing quite a bit of snorkeling around the Dahab area. This one was just the most convenient. But uh, now we just stopped right outside of the water here at restaurant Maya Maya Canyon. And just to give you an idea what prices are, so you'll pay roughly 80 to 150 Egyptian pesos uh, for a meal right here on the water. We'll show you the food once we get it. It cost roughly like six to seven dollars per meal, which for me, that's a nice break after being in Dubai, paying roughly 25 to 30 dollars per meal. Can you tell me about the vegetable curry? Oh yeah. Something else? Uh, Perfect, brother. Uh, Thank you. Shukran. Maria got her uh, favorite vegetarian meal, so it's a vegetarian curry and it comes with chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I got some delicious chicken rice. Mm, fantastic. Eating like a pharaoh today. I think about $5 US, which is not bad. It comes with pita bread, it comes with some little um, cucumber salad, rice, chicken, and a little dipping sauce right there. I'm not sure what that's for, but not bad. It's nice to have cheap prices again. So after a delicious lunch, we're heading over to our next thing to do on this things to do list here in Dahab, Egypt. And we had the option to either go camel riding or ATV riding. Well, we could have done both, but we decided we only wanted to do one before heading into the town. So we're going to go ahead, grab some ATVs, negotiate them and go for a ride. Let's go. All right, guys, if you're coming to Dahab, you must do an ATV tour, especially at the price we're paying. I don't know if you can hear this, but we're paying about 200 Egyptian pounds to go cruising on ATVs for about one hour. Unfortunately, it is a guided tour, and I say unfortunately because I like to go ribbon on these things on my own, but hey, for basically uh, $10 per person or $6 per person when we're sharing one with Maria Del Carmen back here, not bad at all. day with things to do here on our first day in Zahab, Egypt. We are taking a quick cab down. It's about five US dollars to go from where our place is at to downtown. We're going to do some exploration once again with Maria. <laughs> she knows her name pretty well. And my man up here. Hi. Yeah, he's, uh, he's going to be our guy and we're going to get some good food right downtown and figure out what we're going to be doing the next couple days. We're probably going to be hiking up to where Moses once hiked to. We'll tell you much more about that. It's a pretty big hike. It's a legendary hike. And it's one you'll want to stick around in this video for to make sure you can find out more about this hike. But for now, we're arriving into the city center of Dahab. So let's go explore it. All right, after our 75 Egyptian pound cruise down here, we're walking through the center of Dahab. This is the hot spot if you want to get gifts, if you want to eat at restaurants, you want to get Egyptian clothing, whatever it might be. You can find a little bit of everything here. You got really good restaurants, like my guy here over at Friends. Oh, you got fresh fish here, he's showing us. This might actually be the Friends. He's, oh, they, they've got them, they've got them. This is as fresh as you can get. You got live lobster. I think, they, I think he just caught them literally out of the sea today. Yeah, that's, that's about as fresh as they get. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, we got them. They're still alive, they're still looking at you. That's about as good as fresh. they get. Yes. Wow. And the freshwater lobster as well. Oh man, oh man. You can get very easily pulled into many different options of cuisines, actually. The one we found, Friends, was recommended by my buddy Omar, who lives in Cairo, but used to live here in Dahab. And so maybe we're gonna go back there and show you guys the seafood, but for now, we're gonna keep walking along and showing you what else is down here. Looks like we're coming up upon a pretty big hotspot. There's a lot of uh, people swimming in the water, 
hanging out, so it looks like it's the spot to be around sunset. We walked around the downtown a bit more and checked out some of the options for shops and restaurants, including a stop at an inexpensive yet very delicious bakery. Marie just got this nice little food pack here. How much was that? Five Egyptian pounds. It was like 33 cents to chow down on some fresh baked goods. Then we stopped at a shop to get some local attire for our overnight hike that we will be doing later this evening. I'm looking uh, ready for it with my friend here. But first, we're going to go back to see our buddy who was trying to sell us the fish earlier. We are here with my man. Yes. What's nice one. What's Zidane. 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 Looks like D4. Jim and D4. Nice <laughs> yep. one. Salam yeah. alaikum, Alaikum. Salam. Oh, Egyptian. Egyptian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Egyptian. Yeah, yeah, Egyptian. <laughs> from Delta. Cairo. Yeah. Cairo. <laughs> exactly. I'm from Cairo. <laughs> nice one. Welcome yep, to yep, yeah. Welcome to the hub. Welcome to Friendly's restaurant. Shukran Come Habibi. Come against the leaf as a friend. Yes. <laughs> yes. Love nice it. Love one. it. I want to hope. So just got here. We're going to have a uh, a little fresh seafood here. The one you saw earlier in the video. Got my uh, Habibi. Yeah, here. So let's uh, let's see what chow they have for us. We took some of their recommendations and got some delicious Egyptian food, including some fresh seafood. It was great, but more importantly, we needed to get loaded up on food since we are leaving this evening to do an overnight hike at Mount Sinai. Let's fast forward to when we arrive to the base of Mount Sinai. All right, it is 1 a.m. after a two hour bus ride to Mount Sinai, where we're going to be hiking up for the next three hours. It's a relatively strenuous hike. And uh, it'll be a little harder just because we uh, had a full day of activities today. So I'm going to hike up to the top. Just bought this poncho for about five bucks because as soon as I stepped out of the van, I realized it's probably going to be quite necessary. So there's not too much footage on the hike up because it was pitch black outside. But on the way up, we basically stopped at a few little shops to warm up and have some snacks until we got to the very top after about three hours overnight. So after a cold and tiring hike, we're at the top of the mountain. And it's about 5.07 a.m. And so we're still waiting a bit longer for the sun to come up. But I was able to pick up one of these blankets for about 50 Egyptian pesos, which is nice because it is super, super windy up here. Right, guys and we just made it up here to the top of mount sinai and this place is super special for the reason being that three of the world's top religions including christianity consider this the spot that moses came to get the ten commandments from god so regardless of what you believe it's still a super cool place to come and check out if you're in the Dahab area and you can see these mars-like views of insane landscapes here and it is absolutely worth the hike it is definitely chilly up here so make sure you pack enough layers i bought both this sweater and then i rented this blanket that's probably been used by a thousand people but well worth it my hands are frozen so bring gloves as well we're gonna hike down we'll be able to show you a little bit more of what this place looks like the only downside is doing it at night is you don't get to see the views on your way up but when you get to see a sunrise that's magical like this it makes up for all that nighttime hiking facing the cold, getting a nice hot tea, hot chocolate, or maybe coffee, I don't know, maybe that's an option, is the key. Oh, spilled it. The way down the mountain went much quicker as you can imagine, even though we were a bit tired. The amazing part was the views were all new to us since it was pitch black on the way up. The way the sun lit up the mountains was so beautiful, giving everything a golden tint. This is when I really felt like I was on another planet. All right, this is my man Mahmoud. Hi, how are you? He has uh, taken us up here through the night, through these treacherous trails and quite an adventure. And now we're heading back down. He is the man you want to see if you're coming to Egypt. Welcome everybody. I am too happy because some mini tourists we 
climb here to the mosque. Inshallah, we can see as many a lot of people to the tourists from American people. Yes. Inshallah. Inshallah, we Inshallah. need more. God willing, we're getting more American tourists out here. Inshallah. 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 Yalla! All right, guys, that wraps up our time here after a solid, what are we looking at? Maybe eight hours here. The whole trip has consisted of about maybe 10 hours. And uh, surprisingly, I'm not even tired after basically pulling an all-nighter with a couple small naps throughout the night. And uh, it was really amazing. It's beautiful here, as you can see behind me and as you've seen in the videos. And so I would highly recommend you come to this place. Hopefully, you'll get my man Mahmoud, who will be able to be your guide as well. He'll drop some tunes for you, he'll take you around, and he'll give you as many facts as you want to know. So that's pretty much it, guys. We will see you back in Dahab for the next thing to do here in Egypt. Good morning, guys. Today is day number three here in Dahab, Egypt, and we have a bunch of great things planned today to share with you guys. And the awesome part is we're going to be doing it on a boat. So get ready, a lot of snorkeling, a lot of cruising, a little beach chilling, and it's gonna be a good time. We have made it onto our transportation, which happens to be in the back of a pickup truck. It's gonna be an interesting day going out on the water because it's probably like 65, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, so a little chilly to go swimming. We got Maria Del Carmen back here in the pickup truck, living life on the edge. <laughs> Literally. So to get into the blue hole, it'll cost you five US or 80 Egyptian pesos. With today's exchange rate, it's actually cheaper by seven cents to pay in US dollars, but I don't ever carry US dollars. So that's that, got our tickets here. And our next thing we're gonna be showing you guys is the famous blue hole. A lot of people go scuba diving here. I'm not certified yet. And so I'm good with snorkeling this time. So you guys, a little bit more about the tour we're doing today. It's from roughly 9.30 AM until 5 PM and it costs us roughly 300 Egyptian pounds, which with the current conversion rate, that's about 18 to 19 US dollars. Spend a full day on the water, doesn't get any better than that. So as I mentioned before, the Blue Hole is the number one most dangerous diving spot in the world. Right here, they actually have a memorial for all of the people who have tried to set records to go to insane depths. Depths that you need to be like ultra certified and like an absolutely expert in diving. And these people still, unfortunately, did not see the other side. But um, that just puts it into perspective for you how serious some people are diving. As you can see, we're not, we're not uh, doing anything too deep here with these life jackets on. Just enough to uh, toss on the goggles, get an idea of what's down there, and then uh, make our way back up. It's gonna be a bit chilly though, because it's only about 70 something degrees today. Nice and warm, huh? <laughs> I have ever swam in. <laughs> Come to Egypt. I feel like you're in Antarctica. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> here we go. <laughs> So we just finished up snorkeling one of the most infamous dive spots in the world, the Blue Hole. And I'm curious to hear what Maria thought of it. <laughs> I thought it was worth it. <laughs> I can't look here. Uh, beautiful, the best snorkeling I've ever done in my life. And I can confirm that. I've been to a lot of really beautiful snorkeling and diving spots around the world. And this coral was just, it was so alive. I've been to like places all around where the coral's just like, it's barely kicking, let's put it that way. And this stuff is like super beautiful, very, very colorful. I got some of the clips in the GoPro for you. I don't know how well it'll capture underwater, but you gotta come here to see it in order to believe it. But we will see you guys when we're en route to the next spot we'll be checking out today. Midday here, we're heading to our next spot, which is Abba Galum. So we're leaving from the Blue Hole, taking a boat to get over there. It's gonna be about 20 minutes to cruise on over. Hopefully not too choppy, because the last time I had this camera out was in San Andres and almost destroyed it, so 
this time I'm more confident we're not going to be in that situation. But it's going to be a beautiful spot. We'll show you once we get over there. All right, Maria's going. Let's see if she makes it. Words of advice, don't try and enter a boat with uh, slippery burks because you'll almost go in the water just like I did. I was making fun of her for almost slipping to go in the water and it definitely happened to me, but uh, made it with no broken limbs. So we'll see you at Algalon. After a crazy boat ride, I lost my hat and uh, almost lost myself and flew off the boat, but we made it. Now we're taking another pickup truck with a whole squad here. What's going on, guys? Oh! And we're taking about two or three minutes over to the camp here in Abagalum. So we're going to show you more super beautiful water. I don't know if you can hear this because it's crazy windy, but we'll see you there. All right, we have made it to Abagalum, and I'm going to switch over to the GoPro because it's time to do a little bit of snorkeling. I hear it's very beautiful, so see you on the GoPro. Yalla! Guys, it is ice, 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 freaking cold right now outside. No, no, it could actually be colder. It's not like Iceland, but it is chilly. And when it's chilly and you're going in cold water, sometimes you just gotta send it. snorkeling and it was so beautiful this area and like Dahab and everywhere we've snorkeled today honestly is probably like my favorite place I've ever snorkeled wish it was a little bit warmer when you'd come out and especially going in when you're facing that cold water but once you're in you don't even realize you're cold anymore because you're just like in shock there's a couple jellyfish like that almost hit my face but luckily here I guess uh, if you touch the jellyfish they don't sting you so made it uh, Made me a little less anxious cruising right up next to those things. But the coral was beautiful. It's all so lively, just like at the Blue Hole. So highly, highly recommend coming to this spot if you're here in Dahab, Egypt. We'll see you at the next spot. We just arrived to our third and final stop of today's boat trip, which is here at the Blue Lagoon. So we took maybe a five, 10 minute pickup truck ride, ripped through the desert right here, which was a lot of fun basically skidding right along the coastline, which is super cool. You're like right on the sand and you have the ocean just gliding right past. And now we're at this absolutely stunning place here. People are kite surfing, people are chilling. It looks like you got spots to stay all along here and right behind me. Got a little uh, chillax spot right there. So a really good vibe here overall. And the water is super, super clear. So we're doing a little lap around this place because it's basically like a massive peninsula. And you can see these kite surfers right here just absolutely crushing it. I would love to learn how to kite surf, but it looks pretty complex, especially when they're like skidding right up to the shore, but then they turn just in time. I feel like I would end up in the sand. Maria's gonna learn how to kite surf. She apparently wants to stay here for one month. I never want to leave this place. So you heard it live. She wants to stay here for a month just live right here on the beach. So all these places along here are all like numbered spots that it looks like you can stay at. This is the spot. This is this is it right here in the world right here in Egypt. Who would have thought? How can we stay here in one of these little huts? How are you going to stay here? You're going to go talk to the man who's in the restaurant and ask him. Oh, in the restaurant. Yeah, how much it is and there is a hut different huts you know yeah there you is stay one there? with electric there is one not ah, yeah yeah you stay there i have a i have a camp here ah nice cool yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. are you professional at kite serving yeah 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 sweet sweet Me and my uh, brothers nice that's awesome yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and you guys do lessons here yes for actually beginners? we have a school over there yeah yeah what does it cost for a beginner to do it like do a lesson it's six hours cost like four thousand uh, egyptian pounds six hours four thousand Egyptian pounds yeah you split the six hour how many like two now two later two, yeah you know what i mean well cool cool thanks a lot really appreciate it nice to meet you and there he goes
After finishing up the day at the Blue Lagoon, we hopped back on the trucks right at sunset up until we got to the boat to head back. The boat ride was amazing as the sun was setting and some of the Egyptians on the boat actually started singing some songs. Once we were back, later that evening after some rest, we made our way over to our last thing to do here in Dahab, which was to attend a Bedouin party. It costs roughly 200 Egyptian pounds or about $12.69 and basically what a Bedouin party is, is it is an experience where you get to see what life is like in the desert combined with Bedouin music and fire shows. Just a really, really beautiful show to finish off our last night here in Dahab. Alright guys, so that wraps up our time here in Dahab. It's been an amazing four days. There is so much to do. This video only covers a small percentage of the amount of things you can do here. But one thing I want to mention is here at Canyon Estate, you can have an amazing experience. Staying with my man, Mahmoud. Hello. He will take care of you. He's taken such good care of us from making sure the accommodation is perfect. Him and the chef have made fire meals for us. And he's given us all of these amazing tips for us to have the best possible time here in Zahab. So that's going to wrap it up for here. Make sure to check out the next video where we're going to be exploring Sharm El Sheikh, a resort town a little bit different than Zahab, but you're going to love it. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you in the next video.